Hi everyone, Zoe here, and um, Happy New Year, by the way. So, with all the recent political shenanigans going on in the US and here in the UK, um, I thought it might be a good idea to um, make this first to-camera piece of 2021, answer the question of what exactly it is I'm trying to achieve here, and um, who my target audience is. So, I don't want to be flippant and just say everybody, but um, there is a kernel of truth there, in the sense that it doesn't matter where on the political spectrum you are, the issues that I'm raising in these videos are ones you really should be paying attention to. I mean, and ideally proactively engaging with to try and make the world a better place. But even if you vehemently disagree with my takes on every single one of these topics, the truth is you can't safely ignore them because everything is interconnected. We do live in a society. So my goal for today is to address this common misconception this in some quarters, that um, that you can be apolitical, because in reality, everything is political. So let's start. I think that the two most common variants I hear of this, this stance are the, um, are the kind of passive one, which is, gosh, I'm just not interested in politics. I hear that a lot. And then there's the more active one, which is such and such group, or so and so, is being too political. So while these stem from the same source, I would say they connote very different things. I think in the case of the first, you're dealing with sort of a, a defensive posture. You can imagine somebody wielding a shield, basically to, um, to justify their blithe ignorance of the way the world actually works. They do not want to engage with these harsh realities and because they are insulated to a certain extent by privilege, um, they can afford to ignore them. So that is, um, that's one side. Whereas I would say the second bit is more like, to carry on with this metaphor, would be the sword. So, or maybe some other blunt instrument by which you silence people who are saying things that you do not want to hear. Basically information which again flags up the way the world actually functions and that it's really not good. Um, and because of your status or your circumstances or your lifestyle, you're in a position that feels stable and you do not want things that might unstable destabilize that, so you want to shut those people up. So um, let's look at both of these in turn, and hopefully this will be a short video, but I just want to establish like this is the subtext that underlies every one of my videos, is this need to examine things a bit further and do a little introspection and challenge our assumptions about the way things actually work, because certainly the stuff we were taught at school and the stuff that the media teaches us and the stuff we were taught at work is not true for the most part. It's there to keep us passive and keep us happy with the status quo when we could have a much, much better world. So let's look at the first of those two variants uh, to start with. So whenever you hear somebody say, um, I'm just not interested in politics, um, or politics is boring, or I can't wrap my head around it, blah, 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 any of these variants, what they are telegraphing to you is an immense sense of personal privilege. And I know, <laughs> I know, anytime you, you mention the word privilege, people get their backs up. Um, funnily enough, the people who respond most defensively and most angrily and most vehemently to the, um, the suggestion that there might be unearned privileges in existence tend to be the ones who've amassed the most of them. So yeah, funny, it's like, um, it's like asking a fish, what's water? Um, obviously, if you benefit from a specific privilege, then it feels normal to you, so you do not perceive it as a privilege. It just seems to you like that's the way life works. But to people who do not benefit from that same privilege, people in marginalized groups, they are going to be experiencing abuse and discrimination and additional hurdles placed in their way, which you do not experience. You'll experience different ones, but you won't have to experience those because you're privileged. And so when you hear these reports of people telling you about these difficulties, you're more likely to discount and devalue those reports because you yourself have not experienced the things that you're hearing about. It's like, well, surely that can't be right. Um, surely these are exaggerations. Surely if they just tried a bit harder, they would succeed. So this is unfortunately the way a lot of people's minds work is privilege is invisible to the person enjoying it. But anyway, um, I could do a whole other video about dismantling privilege, and I probably will, but let's focus for today um, on a narrower definition. And I think the definition I would like to go with here is if you are in a position where you can just blithely ignore the current political strata and like pretend that you're disinterested in politics and it's boring and it doesn't affect you, then what you are actually saying is that 
You have the luxury of ignoring who's in power, what laws are being passed, because you know that the status quo, that is the way things are currently going, is catering to people like you. That basically you will not be materially affected one way or the other by the change in the political climate. And that is why you can actually say that you are apolitical. But in fact, you're not apolitical because the people who are impacted materially, and by materially, I mean things like they might lose their home, they might be thrown out on the street, they might lose their job, um, they might be thrown in jail, um, they might have their very existence criminalized. These are material changes to the status of billions of people that hang in the balance because of governments and their legislation. So most people on this planet do not have a luxury to be apolitical. So if you hear somebody saying that they are um, not interested in politics, what it means is that they have this privilege, we've established that, and furthermore, they're not using that privilege to advocate on behalf of people who are marginalized. They're not using that privilege to try and be uh, in solidarity with like people in worse circumstances than them. They're definitely not trying to dismantle that privilege. They like it, they like the fact that they benefit from the status quo and that they're not bothered by the fact that the only reason the status quo exists to benefit them in the way it currently does is through the exploitation of billions of other people. So um, what I'm trying to establish here is that pretending that you are apolitical is not morally neutral. It's actually bad. <laughs> I mean, there's no way for you to be ethical and apolitical at the same time because they're orthogonal to one another. If you basically decide that you're just going to continue to enable and encourage the status quo, which is incredibly harmful, as, as we have plenty of evidence to demonstrate, because it's not going to hurt you to benefit from the status quo, and you don't really care that much about other people. Sure, maybe you'd like them to have a good life, but not if you have to do anything yourself to help that happen. Um, then yeah, you're not a good person, and you should stop pretending to yourself that Again, that this is a morally neutral stance, being apolitical, it's a negative stance, it's a, it's a moral failure. So that's half of it. But the problem is, is that even these people, and there are many in our world, who, um, because of their privilege, um, can choose to just not engage with politics whatsoever, um, even though they view it as a morally neutral um, perspective to be coming from, what they are doing is enabling the people in that other group that I mentioned at the start of the video, who definitely are not approaching this from a place of moral neutrality. <laughs> so like the people who use phrases like, um, well, gosh, I don't have a problem with insert group here, but um, they're just too political, or um, why can't they be more quiet about it? Or why do they have to shove it in my face? Why can't they just go do it over there? Um, anytime somebody claims that another group is being quote unquote too political, what they mean is that they want to shut that creep up. They want those people to not be allowed to advocate for their rights, for equality, um, for removal of the exploitation under which they exist, for basically an, a leveling of privilege so that they are not basically disadvantaged so severely that they don't stand like anywhere near the same chances as people who enjoy several types of privilege do. And so again, this isn't I mean, I don't think there's any expectation that that was a morally neutral position when you're trying to silence people who are merely advocating for their own rights. But um, yeah, the people who claim to be disinterested in politics are helping create this environment where the people who actively want to stop other people from having rights feel emboldened to make these statements and say, oh yes, this person's speaking up, they're being too political. Um, why can't they just quietly go away and be in a... Basically, if you want somebody to be quiet if you don't want them to be heard or seen, you basically want them to disappear. You don't want them to exist. And a lot of these groups like either passively hope that these people will just go away if they're not allowed to actually advocate for themselves because that would be being political. Or as we've seen, there are groups that are more than happy to actively help these groups along in passing out of existence. So it's a very dangerous slope to start down. And yeah, whenever you hopefully not you watching this, but whenever you or a family member or a friend claims to be disinterested in politics because it's what too much work to keep track of, um, it just been basically telegraphs again, this idea that like, well, I'm okay and I don't really care that much about other people and then makes it easier for the people who hate certain marginalized groups to attack them for being political, just for speaking up for themselves. So I think that's probably enough for this video. I think that's the main point I wanted to cover is that there is no such thing uh, as being apolitical in reality. 
everything we do, every way we live our life is political because anything we do affects other people's lives. And if you living this sort of lifestyle means another person cannot, and that is so true for anyone in the Western or the developed world, um, let's say the global North, um, then yeah, it's not a neutral position. It's not morally neutral to basically sit back and say, gosh, I just don't want to engage with this because it's a little inconvenient. Um, so what I'm asking you to do as you watch my videos going forward is to realize that I'm coming from a place where I've had to do this too. We basically, I've had to stop and say, okay, I think I might need to do a bit of introspection and um, question some of the assumptions I've had about the way the world works and then take apart at its very basic level what is going on and how all these pieces could be rearranged to make the world a better place. I mean, it's not impossible. There are plenty of good ideas out there, but they're being stomped on by powerful forces that want to entrench the status quo. So just because the status quo is working kind of okay for you, doesn't mean it's working even remotely okay for like the majority of the people on this planet. Just please bestir yourself to like do a bit of research, take a bit of action, maybe inconvenience yourself just a little to help all these other people. Because let's face it, um, there's no, not gonna be any future for human civilization beyond a century or two out if we carry on down this current path. We are on a basically a death cult spiral to non-existence if we don't snap out of this. And it's gonna require like all of us spending a lot of time questioning our beliefs and then reconstructing them. Right, I think that's all for today. I will hope to see you soon. I'm hoping to do a video a week, ideally. We'll see. But um, as usual, please, if you liked or didn't like this video, upvote, downvote. Please subscribe if you want to hear more of this sort of thing. And also, um, if you can, uh, I do have a Patreon and other things, which um, you can use to support the channel. I always do appreciate it. But for now, I will sign off and um, keeping fingers crossed that we can make good things happen in 2021 that we were unable to do in 2020. Take care.